Good morning, honorable judges, teachers, parents, and fellow students. There are many of us that think being the oldest is the best. In a survey of 24 students, more students would rather be the older sibling in their family rather than being the youngest. What you all may not know is there are several different disadvantages of being the oldest. I have a nine-year-old sister and everything always goes her way. I have all the responsibility and there is no appreciation. To start with, because she is younger, everyone thinks she is innocent and cute, but they don't see the other side of her. My sister is the size of a mouse and is as light as a feather, which makes it even easier for adults to be sucked into her cuteness. For example, I see an $8 shirt that I like, so I ask my mom, but she says, you can't get everything that you want. My sister asks for a $300 iPad and she's like, oh, of course, sweetie, you're doing good in school, right? See what I mean? Not just that, but I also have to give her the royal treatment. Believe it or not, she even calls herself a queen. Another example is, say there is one more slice of that yummy, delicious cupcake. My sister is the one who will get that last cupcake just because she's the youngest. Am I the only one who doesn't get this? Next, being the responsible one. To be honest, I thought I wouldn't be playing this role in another 10 years. Guess not. Anyway, I'll admit that when you are an older sibling, you do have to set a good example. That doesn't mean you have to be perfect all the time. Okay, there may be a situation where I complete my homework last minute. So here comes my dad, blabbering about how I have to be a good role model and set a good example. Hello, no one is perfect, not even your favorite role model. Not just that, but I also have to avoid getting into arguments and fights with her. And for us, that isn't very easy. In addition to this, I have to watch out for her. If someone is picking on her, I have to settle that. And I can't be yelling at that child or I'll be setting a bad example. <sighs> Being responsible isn't just a walk in the park. Like Abraham Lincoln once said, you cannot escape the responsibility of tomorrow by evading it today. It's hard work, which leads me to the next topic. No appreciation. No matter what I do for my younger sister, there is no appreciation. She says I'm being bossy if I tell her to do something, but I tell her to do these things for a reason. But no, she thinks I'm being bossy, mean, rude, etc. I don't know where she would be without me, but one of these days, she'll understand. Even though I don't get that cute shirt, or I have to keep up with all the responsibility, and there isn't much appreciation, I still love my sister, because she is like one of my best friends, and I wouldn't take it for anything else in the world. As Amy Lee once said, having a sister is like having a best friend you can't get rid of. You know whatever you'll do, they'll still be there for you. Thank you. Have you ever seen one of those McDonald's or Dairy Queen ads? Well, I have, and they sure look tasty. Fries, burgers, chicken fingers, those are all some of the most fattening, unhealthy, and greasy foods. Good afternoon, students, teachers, and honorable judges. These commercials will almost always make us hungry to want food. Then, we end up taking whatever we find out of the fridge. Us humans get carried away with food commercials all the time. Advertisements can stretch truths. Advertisers use deception, are effective, and we need to learn how to avoid these advertising techniques. Have you ever heard of food stylists? Well, food stylists are just like makeup artists, but for food. They edit and decorate the food for commercials. This is really gross, but according to PBSKids.org, they sometimes rub detergent on chicken and stuff it with, with, with wet paper towel to make it puffy and shiny. Another thing is, on commercials, they usually show really, really low prices, but the food item may not be as big as it looks on TV. To illustrate, a burger could be $15 at a really nice restaurant, while it's $2 at a fast food restaurant. So instead of just buying in on these commercials, we can stay home and make your own salad or snack. Secondly, here are three reasons why advertisements are effective. They grab our attention by playing the commercial many times on TV, or making the food item look really tasty. For example, I've probably seen the McDonald's commercial 20 to 30 times, and they always make the chicken look so juicy on the Sochelle commercials. Next, commercials use catchy slogans, such as, At Dairy Queen, good is not good enough, or ba da ba 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 I'm loving it, from McDonald's. These commercials will almost always make us hungry to want food. Catchy slogans usually stick in the back of our brain, and maybe one day when you're in your car, a slogan like that might come back to you. Now that you've thought about it, you feel like eating
Pink Boot from Dairy Queen. That's just one way we get carried away. Here's another. False advertisement. According to ABC TV, some cereal companies gave an impression that there are lots of a certain food in it, even though they only included traces of it. Now I'll tell you how we can avoid from buying in these commercials. You can start by recording the TV show so you can skip the commercials. This will make sure you don't remind yourself to buy in on these commercials. Next, you can read the ingredients and nutrition guide. This will help you stay healthy and know what's in your food. Last but not least, we, I think we can eat vegetables and fruits before or while we're watching TV so we won't end up wanting to eat these foods and we won't be hungry to want them. In my opinion, food advertising influences our food choices. I hope you'll think twice before you let these commercials take over your decision making.